Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Mac here all the way from Ireland. You, you'll know me for I'm the woman in the morning who helps with uh, making the oats and the porridge. And I work with grade fives the rest of the day. Do you like my hat? I had plenty of had a party, you see, in St. Patrick's Day and to be all dressed up for all of you. But I wasn't able to do it because unfortunately the school was closed due to this virus. But all the kids in grade five had all said to me, Mrs. Mack, if you're doing a party for us on St. Patrick's Day, can we please have some of your wheat and scone bread? So guess what I'm going to teach you how to make today? Some wheat and scone bread. It is so easy to do and it tastes so good. So I'm going to show you the recipe first of all. A couple of ingredients, that's all it is. You've got your flour, okay, the wholemeal flour. You've got your buttermilk or your sour milk, it stinks. It's absolutely smelly. It really is smelly, but it's really good when you're making soda bread. And the last ingredient you have is baking soda. So those are the things that we're going to mix up and put all together. But the first thing we need to do is to turn on our oven. So now that the oven's on, the temperature's rising. Okay, I hope it's not going to rise too much in this household anyway. Next thing I've got to do is to wash my hands. Okay, very important. Now, I washed my hands just two seconds ago because I can't take this backwards and forwards to the sink. But I want you all to go now and wash your hands for the 20 seconds. Okay then boys and girls, so we're ready to start. So I've got all my ingredients, do you remember? The flour, the buttermilk, the baking soda. The first thing, I've got a pan. Okay, but so as it doesn't stick to the pan, I'm going to put a wee drop of grease proof paper on it. So I've got my grease proof paper here as well. Grease proof paper. And it's one of those ones that you pull it out and it'll cut it for you. So it makes it a lot easier. So what do you say? Well, just like this. And of course it probably won't work now that I'm trying to show you how to do it. And I simply put it on top of the pan. Okay, this is going to sit in the middle of the pan. Now my ingredients. I need a bowl. This is so easy. You're not going to believe how easy it is. Yeah, I'll go for this nice blue bowl. Soon as should be wearing blue and gold, shouldn't I? Maybe I can take the hat off now. You've probably seen enough of the hat. Oh, look at the hair underneath it. So this is my bowl. If you can see... This says one cup on it. And do you remember how many of these I said that we were going to use for the flour? That's right, two cups. So we're going to use two cups of flour. Just need to get a, a knife so that I can flatten it off. Here's my flour. So this is the flour here and I'm going to put my cup into the flour. And that's one cup. 
in the second cup. If you've got too much in your cup, you just use the knife, the flat part of the knife, to make it the right amount. So that's two cups of flour added. So we can put the flour back over here. Are you still there? Are you still with me? Good. <laughs> so the next thing I said that I was going to put in was the baking soda. Because this bread has no yeast, you need the baking soda to go with the buttermilk. And the two of these together act or react to make your bread that little bit bigger. Otherwise, it'll be totally flat. So here we go, a teaspoon of baking soda and you just mix it all up like that. So the baking soda is in there with the flour all together. Now I'm going to make, hope you can see, a wee well in the flour. Do you see that? See the wee well in the flour? I hope you see it anyway. Anyway, a wee well is just like a wee hole in it. And in that hole, I'm going to put the milk. So it's not ordinary milk. Again, it's buttermilk. Buttermilk. Okay? So it's one cup of buttermilk. Oh my goodness, to two cups of flour. And it goes, and you'll never believe it, we're nearly done. Because all I'm going to do now is, see I've got a wooden spoon. And I'm just going to mix it up. You see, mix it up, bring it all together. See how it's all coming together? But the best way to get it all together isn't with a wooden spoon. Can you guess what the best way it is to bring it all together? Eh? Best way to bring it all together is with your hands. Okay, so if you don't mind getting your hands all mucky, you put your hands in there and you put it all, bring it all together into a bowl. It takes a wee bit of work, but it'll get there. Sometimes you might find that you might need just a wee tiny drop more of buttermilk if it doesn't all come together. Or if it's too moist, I'd put in another wee drop of the flour. But this one here seems to be not too bad at all. Okay, so I've got my bowl of flour and my buttermilk here in my hand. I think actually it is a wee bit dry, so I'm just going to add another wee drop of the milk to it. This stuff isn't very nice. It's not the type of thing that you would drink. But do you know what? In the old days in Ireland, a lot of people would have drank the buttermilk. And that's all it is. It's just milk that's went sour. But people would have drank it. I thought that was good for them. Now, I just added that little drop of buttermilk. Little drop extra. And as you can see, it's all come together, look. Until like, and it doesn't have to be perfectly formed. We're not worried about how it looks or anything like that. Because it's meant to be kind of a rough looking bread. But it tastes good and that's the most important thing. So I'm just moving this bowl over here. Get a wee drop of flour. The extra drop of flour. Just put it down there for a second. You can see further, please. More, more. So maybe you can see it. Can you see it? I've got it into sort of a round flat bowl. And what I'm gonna do with this round flat bowl is very simply. 
put it onto my baking tray like that. I can't see if it's gone or not. And then I cut a cross on it. It is supposed to be very, very rustic looking. If you want to make it look a wee bit fancier, you can shake a wee drop of oats on top of it. Remember, I'm the oats woman, so I would know. So that's, you just shake a wee drop of oats right on top of it, if you want it to look a wee bit fancier. I'm going to put it in the oven now. But boys and girls, I don't want you doing this bit putting it in the oven. Because you really need your mummy or daddy to be there, or somebody to be there to make certain that you don't burn yourselves. So I'm going to put this in the oven and we're going to leave it there for a wee while and I'll be back in a second and I'll tell you more. So look, it's made. Doesn't it look great? Do you know what? It tastes even better than it looks. I'm going to start slicing it now and I'm going to put some lovely butter on it. Maybe even some jam. We'll just see how nice and sweet it's going to be. Come back. I'll be back in a wee minute. Okay, I'm back again. I've got it sliced. Nice big slice in it. I've got my butter and I've got my jam. But do you know what I forgot to tell you? Was how long you needed to cook it for? 35 minutes. And when you bring it out, obviously, your mommy, get your mommy or your daddy or your friend or whoever it is that's doing it with you. It'll be very hot, so you don't you touch it. You let them touch it. You let them feel it. And in the back of it, this is the back of this one. If you notice, look, I've cut a bit off. But I had to let this cool. Do you hear the knock? It sounds hollow. That means it's ready. So I've got my butter on it. I'm just going to put my jam on it now. And do you know what I'm going to do next? I don't want any of you around here because I'm going to eat it and enjoy it. Good luck. See you next week. Enjoy. Bye-bye.